Just imagine life without the sun. When we think of the sun, we don't realize that without the sun there would be no life. There would be no plants, no animals, no nature that we know. There would be nothing. We would not exist. So in a sense, the ancients had a very deep sense that the sun was not only our life source, but was divine in nature and it reflected a light at the source of the universe that was divine as well. In fact, in India, the idea of the sun was really carried forward. We have a beautiful mantra in the Rig Veda called the Gayatri Mantra dedicated to the sun. And then, and that entire mantra talks about that wonderful sun in the sky awaken in me the inner sun that I have in my head, in my body and in my whole being and let that waken my intelligence, my knowledge, my wisdom. Now, in fact, one of the most beautiful definitions of the supreme reality of consciousness, of the, the source, the Brahman behind everything was described in the Bhagavad Gita by Krishna when he said that when you see me, this being, this full form of the spiritual being, it is like a thousand suns exploding in the sky. Now just think about that. That means that the entire reflection on source was an explosion of light somewhere in the sky in their heads. And the mystics who saw this came back in awe and describe the world that they could not even contemplate in nature. It was so beyond everything. It was like a thousand suns exploding in the sky. When those thousand suns come into you, it came in through your head. And the first reflection was a sun in your eye, in your third eye. It went down into your heart and the second sun was there. And then by the time it got to your nature, your elemental self, way down in the belly, it was a third sun. In order to wake up the inner suns, one has to start at the earth. Because it is from the earth sun, which is at our navel, that the first fire of creativity comes into being. This is where we overcome our fears, our flight and fight syndrome our desire for you know urges and our sexuality our creativity our hunger our need for sugar these are all emanating in this region here because the biology of our being evolutionary wise is telling us that we must stay alive we must function we are a biological species and this is where it all controls in these lower centers down near your belly and as you understand this you will see that the kundalini energy that rises up has to go through this world first, the first world, which is the first sun, to get to the higher regions of spirituality and, and, and mystical adventures. And in this, the symbol of the sun at this level is called the fire in the Manipura, at the navel, or the fire in the belly, one can imagine. And the way we do it is that by lighting, bringing in energy from all around you, from nature, this pranic energy, we bring this prana into us, we are able to move that kundalini upwards and our first sun awakens, the first world. We are conquering this first animal nature in us, this instinct to be an animal. And that's the first stage towards being human and then being spiritual. The second sun, but once that happens at the navel, the second sun is the heart, the second world we go through. And at the heart, we are dealing with being human for the first time. We are, can be compassionate, we can be creative, we can be loving, we can release hormones for happiness and bliss. We can open all kinds of things and build a protection shield around us and act in the world from this place. And it's a wonderful energy. And this world, the second world, the second sun, is a white sun. It is like a single pearl. It sits, and the ancients in India used to call it the Jeev Atma. This is the pearl that sits, your soul. This is the immortal element in you that connects you between heaven and earth, between cosmos and Gaia, 
between and you are still not at psyche in the mind but you are now in the heart opening up to bliss and happiness and it also is the first place where the duality between Shiva and Shakti male and female comes into being in each person so we can actually synchronize our left and right sides and above and below as above so below and our male and female our yin and yang and this energy at the heart is profound because it allows us to live in the world to protect ourselves with an energy sheath around us like a golden egg it also allows us to act in the world so from here we are kinder compassionate we are more centered and this is beautiful what happens there and then we come to the third world the third plane and the third world to conquer to go toward where Kundalini rises up is in the head and this is the gateway to the higher consciousness to that thousand suns I talked about at the beginning and what's wonderful about this energy as it rises the Kundalini comes up through the heart over the back of the head and up through the top is that illumination and light come into you massive intuition and this third sun is a beautiful it starts as a blue sun and it emerges into a radiant star in your third eye that opens up for you and gives you intelligence and gives you divine knowledge wisdom and then the person that has awoken the third sun can live by bringing that knowledge and vision down into the heart and living in the world now those that are really adventurous the third sun is not the end of the journey because once the third sun is awake your three suns are forming an alignment between heaven and earth your your spine is activated you are a connection you are a bridge a pillar of light connecting the three worlds and then a fourth dimension opens up to you which is the thousand suns the thousand petals lotus at the top of your head and once one connects to that one is in the superconscious mind one is connected to source one becomes the bliss consciousness in the center of your being so most people misunderstand that that thousand suns is out there it's actually not it's actually inside us and this thousand suns is in that tiny little pearl at the middle of our heart inside that is where this infinite being resides and once we can awaken it that's where we thrive in the world so this tells us about the three worlds we live in and they actually correlate to the reptilian brain the midbrain or the limbic region and the neocortex at the top of our brain and once we can open the kundalini energy through these three worlds we become a pillar of light and then we have access to infinite intelligence, wellness, possibilities, manifestations and we become a pillar, a beacon of light and an awesome golden energy surrounds us and this allows us to live in the world beautifully and well. So, my blessings to you to share this energy and understand the three worlds and the sound that I want to share with you is I'm clean so so clean I'm and that will wake up the three words for you enjoy